remember Aaron Brockovich, the Oscar-winning movie about a spunky single mom who finds purpose in life by joining a law firm to bring justice to a town that was poisoned by an evil power company. California's Pacific Gas and Electric Company allowed the chemical chromium-6 to leak into the drinking water. And what does chromium-6 do to people? God, anything really from chronic headaches and nosebleeds to respiratory disease, liver failure, heart failure, reproductive failure, bone or organ deterioration, plus, of course, any type of cancer. So that stuff, it kills people. Oh, yeah, definitely. Highly toxic, highly carcinogenic. The movie's based on the real life of this woman, Erin Brockovich, who helped a law firm extract $333 million from PG&E. Some people call Erin Brockovich a hero. But I took a closer look, and I have to say I'm skeptical. Skeptical that the power company's chemicals actually caused all those health problems and that the law firm did heroic work by suing. Brockovich and her boss responded to my criticism by holding a press conference where they called me an idiot and a corporate chill. So as one more example of why America and the open debate here at Fox Business Network is wonderful, here is Erin Brockovich to call me those things in person. So I'll take my shots. Go ahead. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> well, I'm glad because I've said some bad things about you and you've said terrible things about me. So uh, I got it wrong. Look, I, I went on TV and said, we don't know that these people got sick from these chemicals. And when there's a long list of symptoms like that and you say, this chemical caused it, that's junk science. That's not real science. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you bring up a, a lot of good points. And I mean, I'm 10 years after the film now. So things, I can see things differently. And at the time, um, and all of the insults, which, you know, I've waited 11 years to say to you, give me a break. <laughs> so, I mean. Um, well, your, your boss, I, I Ed Masry, said, well. give me a break. Stossel should be saying, give me a brain. Yeah, um, I remember that very, very well. Um, what happens is, you know, we're very involved with the communities. There are communities out there all over the United States who over prolonged periods of time have been exposed to varying levels of chemicals. In Hinkley, right. California, it was chromium-6. And, you know, it takes a long time. These chemicals have latency periods of 10, 15, 20 years to see the effects. But when we're out there, and these communities are showing these effects and are going to doctors and are looking for help. And we sit over here and say, oh, that couldn't be because we're going to rely on what some laboratory rat study. I think that that's a mistake because we could be learning from the people who are out there being exposed every single day to chemicals, what the cause and effect could be. So I. I felt that your comments were dismissive. Learning is one thing and is great, but there's also winning $100 million, which is what the lawyers took roughly. You got $2 million. Californians have to pay more for electricity to pay off all these lawyers. It looks like a scam to me. It's definitely not a scam. I have to tell you, in this instance with Pacific Gas and Electric and being a part of it from the process from the beginning to the end, it was a willful, um, egregious, intentional conduct on their part. They knew that that chemical was a poison. They knew it was getting in people's well water. And instead of doing the right thing and getting people out of harm's way and cleaning it up, they concealed it. And that gets to be the biggest problem of all. The system's not working. And I still think that companies can step up to the plate and be accountable and responsible for what has happened in an environmental disaster and clean it up and get people out of harm's way as opposed to just leaving them there for 10 or 15 years while the legal system does supposedly its job and agencies who are understaffed, overburdened. You're not too happy broke. with the lawyers either, are you? Um, I believe in the judicial system, but what I'm very, very concerned about is that environmental pollution exists all over the United States. And we're stuck in a legal system that's taking 5, 10, and 15 years to resolve. And if we continue to leave people exposed like that, 
That can't be the solution. I deal with these folks. They, do you really think that getting a million dollars and having cancer or your child has died is the solution? That's not what no. they want. And it's clearly wrong when companies lie and conceal. It is wrong when companies but lie. But when the lawyers take $100 million, they aren't really punishing the liars. They're usually long gone, and the people being punished are the people who use electricity in California. Well, as... I didn't. T you have to talk to the attorneys about their fees. I All right, mean, well, I know that's a, an issue for you. Now, one reason Erin's on this program is that she has now written this book. It's called Rock Bottom. It's a thriller that sounds familiar. It's about a spunky single mom who finds purpose working for lawyers who sue to stop an evil mining company from destroying mountains. So, mm -hmm. it's kind of like your story, but now it's the evildoers kind of. are mining companies. Well, I get twenty-five to 35,000 inquiries a month from people, from communities that are dealing with different issues. I'm out there a lot on their behalf, and many times they're inundated with information. They think they can't do anything, therefore they say nothing, and they feel hopeless and helpless. And I saw what the film did, and our hopes through the book was to create awareness on real issues that are happening through a character, AJ, that people would be inspired by and instead of being inundated with information, could sit down and read a book for some entertainment, be inspired, be aware, and close that book and think that I too could be a voice or I could make a difference and become more proactive. And let's just then go back to the movie that made you famous and then we'll give the audience a chance to, okay. to talk to you. The California Cancer Registry has studied cancer rates in Hinckley, the town where this happened, and they found none of the cancers represented a statistical excess. The cancer rates were actually lower than you would normally expect. Mm -hmm. So that deserves an Oscar? I don't think so. I'm, Julia Roberts maybe was a great, and I just watched the movie. I was on your side. I teared up at the end, but in real life, I think it is a scam. The lawyers got rich. The company got smeared. Mm -hmm. This is, it's like you're a parasite feeding off the productive people of America. It's a really rude way to put it. I just but thought that's we were I getting feel. off on a good start. Well, well you I just, just ended that, right? It there. <laughs> um, listen, I understand and appreciate your feelings, but from my perspective and from the people's perspective, that's not what's going on. A company lied and deceived them. And they were poisoned by that. And they fought back. Okay, well, we will agree to disagree on this. <laughs> and uh, please stick around okay. because we'll see what the audience has to say. Maybe they'll agree with you and say I am an idiot <laughs> when we return. I'm never going to live that down. We're back with your questions for Aaron Brockovich. First, for my Facebook page, G. Donahue asks, did you really tell that lawyer that her shoes were ugly? I did. <laughs> so the movie is true to life. <laughs> yeah, the movie's very true. I mean, as far as, you know, what happened to the people and the company and Ed Masry and myself and, and, the, and my the life snarky and the things children people and, said to each other. And, oh, yeah. You know, you know, I don't like walk into a meeting and start, you know, telling people your shoes are ugly. You, you know, you saw in two hours what took years to unfold. So she had it coming. The Netflix description of the movie says she helps the town with the help of her push-up bra. <laughs> so was that... Uh, I, I wear a push-up bra? That's what Netflix uh, implied. Oh, well, no, they have that wrong. <laughs> Good to know. We search out the important facts here. Who, who has questions for Aaron Brockovich or me if you don't like my criticism? Yes, sir. Hi, Ms. Brockovich. I Hi. disagree with what you are saying because I feel that it is more people scaring themselves to death and you feeding that energy instead of being more factual because you don't have the right statistics to fully com comprehend with what you're saying. All right. Now this, I have to say, this is a high school student who's read my book. So. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Um, no, I have no problem with what you're saying at all. And um, again, I appreciate your comments and opinion, but those aren't the circumstances that are happening. First of all, I don't go out there trying to find all these communities. These are people coming to me. 
with their health concerns and what's happening to their children with their medical records. And I'm certainly not the scientist or doctor, but I do work with experts who work in whether they're with companies or whether they're involved in a lawsuit or whether they're with agencies who are pointing out that certain chemicals do in fact cause health problems in communities. So um, it's- But there's always a release of something. There are always people who are sick, yet we're living longer than ever, we're healthier than ever. He says you're scaring people to death. Um, well, I disagree. Communities are coming to me with their health concerns and their environmental issues that we know exist, that the EPA knows exist, that agencies okay. know exist. Yes, sir. And so we're trying to create awareness and find solutions or options that can help them to clean up their water, clean up their community, and be more protective of public health and safety. Hi, thank you for coming. How did, like, before the movie, how did you get into this? Well, how I got involved was kind of a fluke. I really had a car wreck. I went to work at Mazarin Vitito. Um, Roberta Walker, one of the plaintiffs, had called in. Ed couldn't go out there. I went out. And what happened was I just started through my observation, seeing what was happening in the community. We interviewed people. They shared with me what was going on. We started noticing common things between each neighbor that the other neighbor didn't know they were experiencing. I went out to the agencies, I went through water board records. There was a whole lot of documents that showed that this had been going on for some time and they had concealed it. And so that is putting all those pieces together. And I know you bring up the minuscule amounts, but that's not what we're talking about that these people ingested in Hinkley, California. They were large amounts. Yes, sir. What if we didn't have activists such as Aaron? Uh, where would we be? with asbestos. How many more people would have died if we didn't ban asbestos? Every one of us, I don't care who you are, are doomed in the absence of information. And, and I think that people should be made aware, prevention can be the goal of the future, so that they can be given a choice. And I think that choice is something very important here. See, the people in Hinkley, you had a choice not to drink that water because you said you weren't sure what I put in it. But those people in Hinkley, they didn't have a choice. They were on well water. It was concealed from them. And that is what really frustrates me in certain situations. And my answer would be, asbestos is a good example. Because, yes, asbestos gave people horrible lung diseases. But it wasn't found out by these activist lawyers. It was found out by scientists and the government. And it turned out that if you saw the shipyard workers working with asbestos, it's like they were working in a snowstorm. They were for months breathing, breathing in huge amounts of the asbestos. And even then, it was hard to tease out scientifically, was it the asbestos or the cigarettes that almost all of them were smoking? And now it's good. We're, we're not spraying people with asbestos. But the activists have taken it too far. Now you close schools down because there's asbestos in the wall. You kill more kids closing the school down and they play on the street and you spend billions of dollars on that. It goes too far and that's helping bankrupt the country. Yes, sir. Well, it was an interesting debate. I was just wondering if there wasn't a different approach it could have taken rather than suing companies and making, making the lawyers hundreds of millions of dollars. Um. I hear you. Um, I am, have said it before and I'm going to say it again. I am feeling the same frustration as I'm out there with communities. A, a big lawsuit cannot be the only solution. These people don't want to live that way for another 10 years and lose their health. For what? To get some money? They want some kind of workable solution. And I, I really think that, that we're going to have to work hard to find it. If we don't take a step back, and look how we got here today. We won't move forward into the future. I'm all in favor of moving forward into the future. So are every one of these communities I work with, but we're stuck. And somewhere in this wheel, a cog has got to move, whether it be an agency or attorneys or a company, so we can get going again. I don't want to be stuck here either. So um, I'm going to be trying my best over the next 10 years to find some type of solution some type so, of resource, so we can we, so can, we can agree move that these slow expensive lawsuits are not the solution it can't be yeah we can agree are on you gonna something. hug me are you gonna hug me you don't go that far here but oh, thank you oh come on yeah. thank you <laughs>
Good luck with your book. Thank you. At least you very much. Writers do less damage to them <laughs> the country than lawyers do. So thank you for coming thank on you. despite our nasty history and my hostile comments. Okay. Uh, it's good we can have these discussions on Fox Business. Good. In fact, FBN just gave Lou Dobbs a TV show. And to make room for Dobbs, my show, this show, will now move to 10 p.m. starting next week. So I'm moving for Dobbs, yet he's called me a self-important ass. <laughs> I look forward to my conversations with Lou about that. I do. Um, but next, since politicians and lawyers, I say, are not America's heroes, I'll tell you who is. Next. What makes someone a hero? Harris Interactive has done several polls. In 2001, Jesus topped the list. In 2009, Barack Obama edged out Jesus for the number one spot. Martin Luther King was third, Ronald Reagan fourth, fifth was George W. Bush. Politicians and activists are who come to mind when most people think of heroes, especially the media. Fifteen years ago this month, Senator Ed Muskie died. The big newspapers ran long obituaries for him. To reporters, this politician was very important. Generations will benefit from his work, was a quote in the Times. Democrats like to think that he might have been president if he hadn't cried at a press conference. The media routinely treat politicians with reverence, but on that same day, the papers also ran an obituary for another man. His obit was much smaller. His name was David Packard. And I assume few of you know who he was, but he is much more of a hero than any senator. Packard founded the Hewlett Packard Company. His innovation created billions of dollars of wealth. Laser printers, 60 million PCs, hundreds of useful products, and thousands of jobs exist because of David Packard. The Palo Alto garage, where he started inventing things, is a state landmark in California, officially designated the birthplace of Silicon Valley. Even Packard's management style changed our lives. He de-emphasized rank and privilege, gave everyone from the chairman on down a doorless office. And ideas like profit sharing, flex time, management by walking around, reduced work weeks instead of layoffs, started at his company. But he was just a businessman. The media don't think of them as heroes. But here at Fox Business Network, we do. I think business people are much more heroic than politicians. They create things and they spend their own money. One more quick comparison. I don't have to tell you who this was. When Ted Kennedy died a year and a half ago, there was a media circus. President Obama spoke at his funeral. The New York Times did an extensive front page obituary what was Kennedy's life work? Did he invent something that improves your life? He was a politician. But do you know who this is? Probably not. His name was Norman Borlaug, and he died about the same time as Senator Kennedy did. There was no media circus, and yet Borlaug saved a billion lives. He was a scientist who developed a kind of wheat that makes it possible to grow more wheat on less land. When he won the Nobel Prize, the prize committee wrote, more than any other single person of this age, he helped provide bread for a hungry world. Pretty incredible, yet who was more celebrated by the media? Teddy Kennedy. Well, not on this show. It's people like Norman Borlaug and David Packer who really make our lives better. And that's our show for tonight. Don't forget, next Thursday we move one hour later at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm John Stossel. Good night.